Okay, so out of all of the monitors that were announced this year, this has to be the one that I've been most excited for because it's like my two dream monitors packed into one. With this little switch right here, it can transform from 4K 240Hz to 1080p 480Hz. And look, for the past like five years, I've been switching between two monitors at my setup. Usually it's a 4K monitor for editing and then whatever the fastest esports display is at the moment for those competitive style games. I really don't wanna compromise on either of those things. so. I kind of just deal with always swapping them out. I do have a quick release monitor mount, which does make that process a bit easier. But this, I mean, it doesn't really get better than this. It is just a single button. So this is the 32GS95UE from LG. It's a new 4K OLED 32 inch gaming monitor, which is coming out next month. And it is the first time we've seen anything like this where you can switch between two completely different modes. We've seen some monitors in the past where you can crop in and get a smaller viewing distance, which is more comfortable for esports gaming, but nothing where you can swap to a completely different resolution and actually get a boost in refresh rate as well. And let me just say, going from 240 hertz to 480 hertz, that is an extremely worthwhile jump. I know a lot of people like to meme on 500 hertz gaming, saying it's a waste of refresh rate and you're not gonna become a CSGO pro just from a monitor. No one's saying that 500 hertz is gonna make you a professional esports gamer, but if you are playing games that can run at those sort of frames, I say, why not? You see much smoother animation, and it is easier to keep up with in those fast paced games. Now, when you switch into the 480 hertz mode, you actually have three different options. You can do 1080p across 32 inches, or you can downsize that to 27 inch or 24 inch for a more typical competitive size. But this is where it gets really interesting. Stretching 1080p across 32 inches will give you the worst pixel density out of those three options, but it will give you the best pixel readout. Four pixels at 4K convert perfectly into one at 1080p. So to be honest, it actually doesn't look half bad on this panel. Sparing the low pixel density, which you can mostly overcome by pushing the monitor further back than usual, you can still see aliasing on enemy hitboxes and those nice sharp edges, but you lose that sharpness on the 27 inch and 24 inch modes. When you use those cropped modes, they unfortunately look pretty blurry. 1080p is now trying to conform to an odd resolution. I really try to love those modes because the 480Hz OLED motion looks just really insane with those smaller frames, but everything just looks kind of mushy and out of focus. Speaking of 480Hz OLED, it is as insane as you would expect. I measured zero millisecond pixel response times here, as you would expect from a top tier OLED with virtually zero overshoot as well. I also found no differences in response times or display latency switching between any of the modes, which is really nice to see. As for what that looks like in terms of motion blur in game, basically the only thing that can beat this would be one of the new 540Hz TN monitors with backlight strobing switched on. I'd actually say without backlight strobing, this 480Hz OLED is a touch better. The motion clarity here is incredible. You know, it's the best that I've seen without any strobing added in. And on top of that responsiveness, this is an OLED. So you don't have to worry about any ghosting or artifacting. Switching from the 4K 240Hz to 1080p 480Hz, it's 100% worth it if you're playing fast paced competitive games. 240Hz isn't by any means bad or slow, but 480 does give you that lifelike responsiveness and smoothness almost flawless motion. And then here's a quick look at those cropped modes again. They do soften things up quite a bit. Enemy outlines and details in particular are quite lost. You know, it's extremely obvious in game and not something that I could find myself getting used to. The brightness is very good for an OLED. This one tops out at just above 260 nits with a completely white screen. You can boost that artificially by using the non-uniform brightness modes, which on this monitor are named peak brightness. Basically the panel will, you know, try and be tricky and spread the brightness around to give you the overall brightest image. I found this fine for desktop browsing and the low mode as well is okay for gaming, but not something that I'd use for editing. As for the colors, the white point is basically as close to perfect as you can get. We have a massive DCI-P3 color range and the accuracy in the sRGB mode is good. You know, just a touch oversaturated in some areas. Personally though, I would happily use this monitor for my own color grading straight out of the box in the standard Gamer One profile. And of course, OLED colors for gaming are absolutely next level. In terms of the coating here, it is like an anti-glare matte coating, which I think I prefer over the glossy coatings for these OLEDs. They handle incoming light extremely well and you don't lose any of that contrast or punchiness, which sometimes you usually do with a matte coating. The text clarity on this monitor is also extremely good. LG are using a new subpixel array for this new panel. And yeah, looking at fine text in Windows, 
looks almost like a normal RGB display. This is easily the best OLED that I've seen in this regard. Usually we see some color fringing here due to the weird subpixel layout that these OLEDs use. But here, I mean, I'm just gonna say it, it is a non-issue. Now I know we've been talking a lot about the 1080p 480 hertz mode because that's kind of the big feature here. The fact that it can switch to that is just insane. But primarily this is a top tier 4K 240 hertz monitor. I would say it's even slightly better than the very similar ASUS 32 inch that I tested recently because of the W OLED panel, which I feel is a little bit superior to the QD OLED on the ASUS. The 4K 240Hz gaming experience at 32 inches is absolutely phenomenal. Like you could literally buy this monitor and just use it for 4K, that would be totally fine. For me though, it is all about the 480Hz mode on this OLED because that's the style of games I mostly find myself playing. If that mode was good, then this monitor can be my one and only monitor on my desk. Could that 480Hz mode possibly be comparable to the 540Hz TN that I've been using for competitive esports games? And the answer is actually yes. The only thing I really need to do is push the monitor further back than I normally would. And that's it. After an hour or two, I found that I was pretty well adjusted to it and I found myself playing like I normally do. Not only that, but the responsiveness and the lifelike animations, which I keep describing about these 540Hz panels, that was here too on the 480Hz OLED. Would I buy this monitor if I was only interested in esports games and not using the 4K mode? Uh, no. I would instead grab one of the 540Hz TNs or wait for one of the 1440 480Hz OLEDs coming out later this year. But it's the fact that I can switch from work or editing in 4K to competitive gaming at 480Hz in like four seconds. I don't have to unplug or swap anything. I don't have to mess around with my setup or restart my PC to make sure Nvidia Shadowplay is working. It's literally all in this single switch. 1400 bucks is what this monitor is gonna be on sale for around mid April, which, you know, is very expensive for a single monitor. And if you're only interested in one of the things that this monitor can do, whether it's the 4K OLED, you know, there are cheaper monitors there. A thousand bucks will get you a nice 4K 240Hz QD OLED and then if you're only interested in the esports stuff there are better alternatives there too especially on the horizon like I mentioned but if you have a similar use case to me and you could see yourself possibly using this monitor 50 50 between the two modes it is literally two monitors in one very hard to argue that that is overpriced but yeah I mean for me this is like the dream monitor it can do both of the things that I do mostly at my desk extremely well so this is what I'm going to be using uh, for the foreseeable future I'll keep you guys updated but yeah, for me, it is the all-in-one package.